you know, we've heard a lot of sort of novel ideas lately about the economy. Some people favor a basic income guarantee. Some people favor much more aggressive uh, use of the tax code to advocate hiring. Why is a federal job guarantee the best labor, uh, the best labor market plan? Well, um, hi, Joe. It's uh, good to be on the show. Hi. The job guarantee is a policy that guarantees work for people who cannot find it. It's as simple as that. We can try to do all sorts of wonderful things to crank up the economy, spur growth, strengthen the public sector. This is all well and good. But at the end of the day, the economy doesn't provide full employment. It doesn't provide jobs for all uh, over the short or long run, except maybe you know by happenstance. And so what the job guarantee essentially is, it's a public option for work. It essentially says if, if you've been looking mm. and you went to the unemployment office and you searched on monster.com and you searched and you have not been able to find a suitable employment opportunity at, at above poverty pay, this is the public option. Pavlina, how do you guarantee that this becomes actually productive work that expands the pr productive capacity of the nation creates things that people want as opposed to what people would associate as make work. Yes, I mean, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are just so many projects that demonstrate the value of direct job creation, and we have neglected the public sector for such a long time. There are, I mean, I can list, you know, <clears throat> many, many jobs that are needed, uh, whether those are green jobs, whether those are care jobs, um, you know, whether we're dealing with stormwater runoff. I mean, there are many jobs that are essential, that are low that are uh, labor intensive, that need to be done, rain or shine, and uh, they can absorb people on ongoing basis, on long run basis. So the way I envision it is we basically provide a public service employment option. And we have many programs to look to for success. Um, so I have no doubt that we can create, you know, 10 million extra jobs uh, that are useful. So my, my first question would be cost. What's the anticipated cost of this? And would it be only available to those that aren't now in the workforce? Because if we're talking about $15 an hour, two weeks of paid vacation, let's say $10,000 a year benefits, $40,000 a year, we're talking about 25 to 50 million Americans that are earning less than that right now, never mind the ones that aren't in the workforce. I mean, this thing could get really out of control really quickly, Pavlina. Thanks for the question. I think the, the way to think about costs is first to, to recognize, to acknowledge that we are already paying for the enormous costs of unemployment. So this is the be benchmark scenario. Virtually every social and economic problem we can think of is related in one way or another to unemployment. So this is um, already paid for. We're expending enormous resources to deal with the fallout of unemployment, whether it is crime, incarceration, mental health problems, subsidies that we toss here and there and hope to create jobs for all, but they never quite trickle down to the very bottom of the income distribution. So this is all paid for. We've modeled this proposal, and we find that um, in, with very conservative estimates, uh, we could expect to estimate uh, to um, uh, the, the program is, is expected to be about one to one and a half percent of GDP. But I will tell you, we have not simulated the cost savings from all of these other expenditures that I enumerated. You know, people who you know go back into the uh, prison system because they have not been able to find employment. People who. Um, uh, are having mental and health problems uh, because of unemployment. So there are many social costs that we have not simulated, and I think if we were able to appropriately account for them all, this thing is going to be paid for completely. Uh, Pavlina, real quickly, what about the cost to private businesses that now find themselves competing with the government for labor? Good question. Yes, I mean, this is, uh, you know, what we are hoping to do is to implement a structural reform in the economy as a whole that creates net new employment opportunities for the chronically unemployed. But by providing a minimum wage floor, we essentially, this program essentially serves as the effective minimum wage for the economy. So the private employers will have to respond. And that is, you know, that is an objective of the policy. We, we really don't think that uh, poverty pay private sector employment should be something the economy reproduces or sustains. So it's a matter of how you phase in the program. You know, if you phase it in over a number of years to allow firms to adjust, 
the way we do with the minimum wage, then uh, you know you could minimize the disruption effect on the private sector. But the ultimate goal and objective is to create a floor to all wages in the public and in the private sector that are above poverty wages. And of course, you, you mentioned that term minimum wage, and I gather that part of the idea here is that by having a public sector guarantee of a job at that minimum wage, it becomes a true minimum wage rather than a minimum wage of essentially zero if you can't find a job. That's exactly right. All these minimum wage and living wage ordinances are all great that states and localities are trying to pass, but if you can't find a job, you really don't benefit from the minimum wage. Uh, if there is a public option for work, though, then uh, you know that that is the minimum that you will receive. And so when, uh, just going back to the previous question, you know, wouldn't this suck out so many of the private sector jobs that don't pay $15 an hour? My answer would be um, no, not necessarily. It depends how it is phased in, because if we do it in the appropriate gradual way, the private sector will respond. And um, we've seen this, you know, happen with minimum wages, private firms don't, you know, like they, they will adjust uh, over time. And so I don't expect uh, a very large influx of, em of employment into the program. I, the goal is to create the employment opportunities that right. are missing for those who can't find them. 